Simple question to ask yourself as to whether or not you meet this control. Do you allow people to install any software? The second control underneath asset management within the Identify family are software platforms and applications within the organization inventory. So similar to the first control where we were inventorying physical assets, here's where we're looking at software, platforms, applications, those types of things. Do you have them inventoried within your organization? So some questions to be asking yourself. Has an inventory of the components of the system been developed, documented, and maintained to accurately reflect the current system? Again, NIST traditionally started out with looking at very system views, but we've broadened its, its usage to an organizational level. So the question really here is, again, within your environment, whether it's your HQ, okay, or your remote location, okay, or your cloud instance, or Bob or Sally working at Starbucks, um, do you have the software that is being leveraged by these folks, used, installed, wherever it is? Do you know what it is, okay? Um, do you have an inventory of it? Do you have the inventory of the components? Is there a defined list of software programs not authorized to execute within the system? Do you have a defined list of software programs that are authorized to exist? Simple question to ask yourself as to whether or not you meet this control. Do you allow people to install any software onto the systems that are on your network? Or do you block that? Uh, simply probably tracing back to um, administrative privileges, local administrative privileges, things like that are going to be a telltale sign as to whether or not you do this and manage this control effectively. Do you allow uh, your development or your product that you have sitting up in a cloud, whether or not it's Azure or AWS or Google, wherever it is, do you allow your developers to be able to um, uh, install directly into your production environments and operate? Or are you looking at some type of a clearinghouse, right? Some type of central repository where everybody goes in, all of the uh, software is reviewed, and then out of this, and only out of this, is an authorized list of software that can be leveraged into your HQ, into your cloud environment, can be installed into remote devices or uh, remote locations, whatever it is. Do you have a firm control and grasp on the software that is within your environment and being leveraged? You know, the one thing that hits me about uh, these first two controls, both Asset Management 2 and Asset Management 1, are when you look across other control sets, specifically the critical security controls, these two are really um, bubbled into the, the very first two controls for the CSC Top 20. So. You know, if you're looking at or have you seen the CSC 20, uh, critical security controls used to be called SANS 20, FBI, top 20, whatever. But looking at these, control number one and number two are identical to the NIST cybersecurity framework controls. Now, NIST is not in order as you read it. But it is interesting that the first two controls you run across within the NIST cybersecurity framework happen to be the priority one and two controls that the uh, Center for Internet Security has developed with the, uh, the top 20. Again, I can't stress enough. You cannot defend something that you do not know exists. So having an inventory of both of your hardware and your software are a step in the right direction to be able to figure out what it is that you have to eventually defend when it comes to cybersecurity.